So recently I found these chords and I do believe they sound like a sad movie. They sound like like a movie and when you play them it's kind of addicting. So I could play them all day long. Let me show you. Hey bestie, um, I hope you do well. I hope you guys are doing well. I do pretty well. Can you see that? I got a new piano. I got my first piano ever actually. This is my new baby. It looks so pretty, oh my god. It looks so pretty. I could like stare at it the whole day and just look at it. I'm gonna give you a little tour. I'm gonna turn on the lights. These details, they look so pretty. The keys look so good as well. And I love, love, love the look of it. How it looks right now. With the picture frames and the candles and the... But nevertheless, I wanna talk about today's video actually. I moved to my new apartment and since I'm fully down and fully into renovating and fully into furnishing my apartment, I wanted to do something with the crochet. I think it's my biggest project that I've ever done. I'm gonna show you how to crochet a freaking big ass carpet. It's very, very easy. What I'm actually talking about is I wanna place a big carpet into my living room, which is obviously crocheted. It's gonna go in front of my couch. Regarding the materials, I'm using a 50 millimeter hook and obviously the hooked spaghetti yarn. You get these online. This yarn is suitable for a 10 to 50 millimeter hook and it's a cotton yarn actually. What I know from me hooked is that they recycle old clothes into yarn and obviously a wool needle and some scissors and that's all you're gonna need for this whole carpet. Alright, a little update on the materials. I just measured my carpet and the length is 2 meters and 20 centimeters and the width is 1 meter and 90 centimeters. In the end I only used 6 balls of yarn of each color. So if you want to recreate the same exact carpet you should be fine ordering 6 balls of um, yarn of each color. So 12 balls in total. <laughs> Regarding the tiles actually, I'm gonna blend you in a little overview of the tile, how it looks like. Um, in total this tile has five rows and um, we're gonna start right off with a slip knot. Insert our hook. We are going to chain up four. When we've chained up four, we're gonna go back into the first chain, uh, insert our hook, pull yarn through, do a slip stitch actually and now we have a little circle we've built a little circle and now we're going to chain up two on top of it turn our work and now we are going to do a double crochet into that big circle so we're gonna yarn over get the yarn through the first two loops and yarn over and pull the yarn through the last two loops in order to close our double crochet and we're gonna repeat that one more time so we're gonna yarn over go into the loop, yarn over, pull the yarn through the first two loops, yarn over, pull the yarn to the, through the last two loops. And then we have a set out of three double crochets. The first two chain ups is counting as double crochet in this case. In order to create a granny square, we're going to chain up two now in order to build the corner. And now we are going to repeat the whole thing. We're going to yarn over and do three double crochets into the hole. So now we have two sets of three double crochets and we are going to add two more sets of double crochets in the end. So we're gonna have four sets of three double crochets in the end. So when we've done that, we're gonna chain up two again for the last corner. And now we're going to connect it to the first double crochet, which is in our case the two chain ups with a simple slip stitch. And now we've created the first row of our tiny little granny square. And we're gonna repeat that for five more rows. So now we are going to chain up two 
turn our work and we do two double crochets because the first one is counting as one double crochet. So we're going to add two double crochets into the little chain um, hole that we've created because of the corner. And since we are at the corner again, we are going to do two chain ups on top of the third double crochet. And now we are going to do the exact same thing again. We are going to do three double crochets into the same hole. And now in order to jump into the next corner hole, which is on the other side, we're going to chain up one. And now we're going to do three double crochets into the next corner hole. When we've done that, the same game repeats itself again. And we're going to chain up two, create the next corner and do three double crochets again. And we're going to repeat the whole process until we've reached the end of row two or round two. So as soon as we've done the last double crochet of our last corner, we're going to chain up two, oh, chain up one again in order to jump into the next corner again. And now we are going to conclude round two with um, a slip stitch in order to connect the first double crochet with the last double crochet. We're going to chain up two and turn our work and start with our row three. So in round three, you recognize that we don't have only corner holds again. We also have, yeah edge holds. I don't know how to call these, like holds in between the corners. So what we're gonna do, we chain up two, we turned our work and now we're gonna place two double crochets into the edge hole. And now we're gonna do one chain up in order to jump into the next corner and do three double crochets again and two chain ups in order to build the next corner and do three double crochets again. When we've done that, we're gonna jump into the next edge hole, which is which comes up next. And in order to jump there, we're gonna do one chain up and do three double crochets into the next hole. And now we chain up one again and jump into the next corner hole. And we're gonna repeat that whole process actually for row three again and row four. But in row four, you will recognize that you don't have no longer one edge hole, you have two edge holes. Uh, in between each of the edge holes and corners, you're gonna have one chain up. And in between the corner, you have two chain ups in order to build the corner. And so on. And we're gonna do that until we have five rows in the end. And when you've concluded actually the five rows, it should look like this. At first it looks very bulky, but as soon as you lay it on the floor, walk on it, it will get flat and yeah, becomes a little bit bigger. And as soon as you've done that, you and concluded row five, you connect the last double crochet with the first double crochet with a, a slip stitch and you chain up one and pull along and and cut it and pull the yarn through actually and uh, then you can weave in the ends if you want to <laughs> I love, I love how it looks already. Good morning, by the way. I started working on the brow and tiles yesterday and um, I got quite far. I almost finished it. Only four tiles are missing and then the whole thing is done. And I was thinking of fringing out the ends. That end is gonna be a fringy end. That end, not. Baby. 
bestie, look at this. <laughs> I've got all of the tiles ready. What comes next actually is I have to sew them together and I decided to go for a fringy end to add actually fringes to the short ends of my carpet. So I'm talking about these kind of fringes. I decided to go for brown because I have like the feeling it rounds up the carpet. I don't know, it gives more, I don't know, it feels more satisfying to me. How this is gonna be done, I'm gonna show you right now. So to, in order to add the fringy end, you can either decide on adding it to the tiles separately, or you first sew it together and add the fringy end at the end. Since I'm doing the fringy end with the brown, I'm gonna attach it to one of the corners just simply with a knot. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but I'm using a 10 millimeter hook for this because I had like the feeling I don't wanna have the fringes too fat. So I want to have them a little bit smaller, so I decided to go for a smaller hook size. I chain up one. With that chain, I'm gonna pull a long end, like 15 centimeters, something like that. And then I turn it around eight times. Then I go into the next loop, insert my hook, pull the yarn through, and pull it through that little hole that we still have on the loop. And then we just simply add a ch um, chain up to it. And you have your fringe, which looks like this. So it's like a twisted loop. And we're gonna do that and repeat that for the whole row. So we add one fringe to each loop. <laughs> I'm having vocal coaching right now and I love vocal coaching. It's so much fun. And that's why I need to do these exercises here. <laughs> All right, so I'm currently um, sewing those parts together. What I do is I have a wool needle, the biggest one that I could find. You remember when we crocheted those sets of three double crochets? So what I do is, those sets of three double crochets are at the outer edge of our tile as well. So I connect these. So each stitch, I'm gonna connect just by simply sewing it from left to right. And what helps the process to work a little faster, to stack them. So I do several at one time like four or five and then I just pull the yarn through all of them and that's how you yeah, connect them Bestie, I can't believe it. This is the final result. And I did it myself. I just can't believe it. I still like I'm still missing a couch coffee table, but I'm gonna get one soon. If you like this tutorial, give it some thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more DIY videos in the future. And I hope you have a beautiful day and a good morning, good evening, good night whenever you're watching this video. And I see you soon. Bye bye. I'm out. Ciao, ciao.